Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Tampering with time has been an ambition of man since he first realized how inexorably he is time's slave. At this time of the year, although we have even less time on our hands, time is much in our minds. We make a magic ritual of New Year's Eve when we suppose we can flush away all our past impurities and begin afresh at that magic hour of midnight on the 31st of December. But suppose we couldn't. Suppose the 31st of December were not the end. Listen. Listen, then, as Mr. Frank Lovejoy stars in the 32nd of December. And now, the 32nd of December, starring Mr. Frank Lovejoy, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. As far as I was concerned, when I got up in the morning of December 31st, it could stay 1958 forever. The only trouble is time doesn't work that way. Time is a downhill ride in a car with no brakes. You can't stop it even if your life depends on it. And mine did. Joe, your breakfast is getting cold. I'm coming, I'm coming. All I have time for is a cup of coffee anyway. Uh, what is this, milk? Don't we ever have anything but milk to put in the coffee? You know we can't afford cream these days. We can hardly afford to eat. Molly, you'll be wearing mink yet. Just give me a little more time. Yeah, you've been saying that ever since you got married. Well, sooner or later, Molly, I'm going to make it. By the way, honey, uh, let me have your ring. Why? Well, you said the diamond's loose. I'll drop it to the jewelers on my way to the office. Oh, we can't afford to get it fixed now. Molly, that's an expensive ring. We can't afford not to take care of it. Joe, have you been gambling again? Oh, now, Molly, I told you, I'm all through with that. You told me the same thing just before you pawned your watch. And the cufflinks I gave you on our first anniversary. I'm and not the... going to pawn your engagement ring. Now, let me have it. I'll pick it up on my way home tonight. Well, all right, but, Joe... What? Remember, it's very precious, at least to me. Sure. Sure, I've been gambling again. I was in the whole bag. The boys wanted to pay off by midnight, and this time they weren't going to take no for an answer. If I couldn't raise the dough on Molly's ring, I didn't know what I'd do. The pawn shop was like any other pawn shop. Dirty and gloomy, full of junk, with clocks ticking all over the place. One thing caught my eye as soon as I came in. In the front case, a watch. Curiously ornate, obviously very old. It sort of glowed in the case. I couldn't take my eyes off it. You like to look at the watch? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no, it's very interesting, but... Uh, how much can I get on this ring? On this, I can lend you $150. $150? Uh, the guy I won it off claimed it was worth more than 1000 $150. I can probably get 500 for it easy. Then you would be foolish to accept my offer. That's the best you can do. 150. I'll take it. I will get the money. While I waited, I felt my eyes drawn to the antique watch again. I picked it up. It felt warm in my hand, almost as if it were alive. Its face was covered with all sorts of dials and figures. The date of the month, phase of the moon... Even the signs of the Zodiac. Some of the dials I couldn't read at all. They were inscribed with strange characters like hieroglyphics or ancient Sanskrit. Suddenly I felt I had to have that watch. One hundred, twenty, forty, forty-five, one hundred fifty. Can you tell me what all these dials mean? I can tell you only that this watch controls many kinds of time. The fellow who pawned it claimed it could make time pass as slowly or as rapidly as he desired. <laughs> That's a pretty good trick. Mm -hmm. But only a trick. Time is different for each of us, is it not? What do you mean? To men sitting on a hot stove, one second lasts forever. But to a man making love, forever is only a second. <laughs> yeah, I, I see what you mean. How much are you asking for the watch? One hundred fifty dollars. 
Excuse me. Hello. Yes, one moment, please. Is your name Joe Adcock? Yeah, why? Yes, Mr. Adcock is here. Who is it? Who is calling? Hello. Hello. Hmm. That is odd. Nobody knew I was coming here. Who was it? He did not identify himself. He just said I would not believe him. Then he hung up. <laughs> it's funny. Say, uh, now what about the guy who pawned this watch? Any chance of him wanting it back? No, Mr. Adcock. He will not return for it. He has no further use for the watch. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll take it. I don't know why, but I, I've got to have it. I had no business buying the watch. It was a crazy thing to do. I hadn't walked more than a few steps from the pawn shop when I learned just how crazy. Hold it, Adcock. Well, who are you? Just one of the boys. What do you want? A little talk. Private. In the alley here. But I don't have In one. the alley. Ah, my arm. You got the grand, Adcock? I got until midnight to get it. Yeah, that's right. The boss just wants me to make sure you don't forget like last time. Oh, I, I won't forget, I promise. I'll be waiting for you at midnight, right here by the pawn shop. Oh, and one more thing. So what is it? <clears throat> oh, That's just to make sure you don't forget. If you don't show up with the dough, there ain't going to be no New Year for you. You understand? Yes, I, I understand. Good. See you at midnight. I had to get back the 150... Maybe I could make a fast killing at the track with it, or, or, or something. I had to get it back. Oh, back so soon, Mr. Adcock? Yes, yes, I, uh, I made a mistake. Hmm. We all make mistakes. That is life. Look, I've got to have that money back. Here's your watch. My watch, Mr. Adcock? This is your watch. You bought it. But, but I don't want it. I want the money. A deal is a deal. But you don't understand. Uh, I... It is you who do not understand, Mr. Adcock. To sell the watch, you must find a buyer. I am not buying. But look, you've got to help me. Well, will you take the watch in pawn? Of course. That is my business. Well, how much can I get for it? Five dollars. Five dollars? Just a few minutes ago, I paid a hundred and fifty for it. It is unfortunate that I do not value it so highly now. Five dollars? No, thanks. <laughs> Five dollars wouldn't help me. I had to have money, big money. My only chance now was to try to borrow it. I know you've had an account here for years, Mr. Adcock, and of course we like to do what we can for our regular customers, but unless you have some collateral... Well, what kind of collateral? Oh, stocks, bonds, real estate. Uh, if I had that kind of stuff, I wouldn't need the loan. Five hundred? Joe, you're crazy. Hey, bartender, another beer. All right, all right, Harry. Make it a C note, anything. Yeah, well, what about the C note you borrowed last August? Oh, I'll pay you back. Honest. Yeah, I heard that last August. Oh, Harry, how long have you known me? Mm, ten years, I guess. All right, ten years doesn't that count for anything? Not for a C note, it don't. Oh, but Harry... Oh! Not a dime. Not a lousy dime. Only one thing left to do. Shop. Molly, uh, I want you to come home right now. Sure, aren't you at work? No, I'm home. Well, what's the matter? Are you sick? I'm all right. Just come home and hurry. Joe, sure, what's wrong? We've got to get out of town. Fast. It took only a few minutes to throw everything Molly and I owned in the suitcases. I kept looking at the watch... Wondering when Molly was going That's to show the up. Signal. The correct time will be 2.30. 2.30? What's keeping her? Well, at least the watch is on time. I wonder when I ought to wind it. <laughs> Might as well do it right now. If I can figure out which one of these knobs to use. I'll try this one. 
What the devil? Where did the sun go? It was shining a minute ago. Now it's snowing. Oh, blasted, I did get the wrong knob. I moved it back to the 28th, so now I've got... Hey, wait a minute. The 28th? Well, Sunday, the day we had the big snowstorm. Could the watch have... Ah, it's impossible. I set it back to the 31st, and I... What the... Now the sun is shining. Did the watch change the day, or am I losing my mind? Maybe I could set it again, test it. Let me see. I, uh... I was in that pawn shop just before 1 o'clock. I set the hour hand back to 12.45. There. Now we'll see. Hello? Is this the 3rd Avenue pawn shop? Yes. Is, uh, is Joe Adcock there? One moment, please. Is your name Joe Adcock? Yes, Mr. Adcock is here. Who is calling? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I could hardly believe it myself. But there was no question about it. The watch did control time. Once I'd grasped that fact, I began to realize its implications. For the first time in my life, I could have all the time I needed all the time I wanted. Joe! Joe! Oh, Joe, what's wrong? Not a thing, Molly, not a thing. But you said we had to leave town. Oh, did I? Well, that's all over now. Joe, what are you talking about? I'll probably lose my job. No, because... no, don't get excited. I... Well, I might as well tell you the whole story. I lied to you about the gambling, Molly. I'm a thousand dollars in debt. I've got to pay off by midnight, but... You I... pawned my ring. Didn't you? But now, don't worry. I'll get it back. You lied to me. I said I'll get it you back. You have no right to pawn it. It's mine. I want my ring, All though. right. I'll get it. Now. Right now. I haven't got time now. I've got to get back to the bank before it closes. Get my ring. You promise. Will you quit nagging me about your blasted ring? Let me get back to the bank. We'll have enough money to buy you a dozen rings. Joe, what are you going to do? I'm going to rob the bank. What else? I had the watch figured out right. Robbing the bank would be as easy as taking pennies from a blind man. It was two minutes to three when I walked into the bank and headed for the vault. Oh, hello, Mr. Adcock. Back again, I see. Yeah, yeah, I've got to get into my safety deposit box. Certainly, go right ahead. Good. Nobody else in here. Now, I just turned the watch back to Sunday, the 28th. It worked. <laughs> I'm locked in the vault and it's Sunday. Now, let's see where they keep the ready cash. There it is. Stacks of it and all mine. Well, that's plenty for now. Enough to pay the mob and more. <laughs> There's always more where this comes from. Now, reset the watch to December 31st. Perfect. The perfect crime. All I have to do is get out of here without letting them see the money. Mr. Adcock. Yes? A happy and prosperous New Year to you, sir. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Molly! Hey, Molly. Molly, it worked. We're rich. Have you been drinking? No, not a drop. Here, look at this. Go on. Take them up. They're real. Sure. These are $1,000 bills. Where did you get them? I robbed the bank. Oh, come on, Joe. I always told you I'd make it big someday. Well, today is the day. Now, you go out and buy yourself a dress. We're going to celebrate New Year's Eve in style. Happy New Year, Joe. Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Let, let's get out of this problem. It's almost midnight. I thought we were going to celebrate. You were going to take me to a nightclub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But first, I, I got to meet a guy at midnight. Come on. Who? A guy. I got to pay off that gambling debt. Well, where are you meeting him? It's just a block away, in front of the pawn shop. The pawn shop? 
My ring. Joe, you forgot my ring. Oh, for Pete's sake. I'll get your lousy ring back. Just give me a little time. Oh, a little time. That's the story of your life, isn't it, Joe? Just give me a little time. Well, all right. I'll give you all the time you want. All the rest of your life. I'm through with you, Joe. I just can't take it anymore. Molly. Don't leave me. Molly. Come back. Well, what happened? Molly just disappeared. The street is deserted. Molly! Hey, where is everybody? I wonder if this crazy watch had anything to do with... The 32nd? It should have clicked over to January 1st. Oh, no wonder everybody disappeared there. Isn't any 32nd of December. I'll just... I'll just reset it. It's stuck. It won't budge. Oh, it's got to move. It's just... Oh, no. It can't be broken. I can't stay in the 32nd of December forever. I've got to fix it. I've got to get the back off. I've got to get it to works. I... There. But there's nothing inside. It's the 32nd of December. And it will always be the 32nd of December. starred in William N. Robeson's production of The 32nd of December, written by Morris Lee Green and William Walker. Supporting Frank Lovejoy on the 32nd of December were Joan Banks, Barney Phillips, Sam Pierce, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in... Tonight, Thrill with Gunsmoke on the CBS Radio Network.